it's my truth, so f it. Black people were not ready for freedom. We weren't. We were not ready for freedom. I, I've studied everywhere we have been liberated, whether or not we were able to liberate ourselves from our own bondage. And it's a deep question. So, study us as a people. This is not a criticism, it's a reflection. If you differ, I'm happy to share perspectives. But study us as a people. You notice that everywhere where we are in bondage, we are phenomenal at fighting for our liberation. Once we've received it, something goes wrong. And the mindset is pervasive. And it's, it's pervasive, it's invasive, it's insidious. It's like a virus. And if you try and remove, you know, once a virus takes over a cell, it multiplies. And so the reason you can't remove the virus is the only way to kill it is to kill the host. That's where we are. So when a person amongst us does something, rather than celebrate, we ridicule. Rather than collaborate, we compete. Rather than support, we sabotage. I thought long and hard about why is this, like it's been bugging me. And then I realized something, that whether it was apartheid, colonization, the Jim Crow laws in the US, all of those systems of oppression had one singularity in communication. They said to black people, only one. That's it. So in slavery days, there was only one house nigger. The rest of y'all worked in the field. When we negotiated for our South Africa, there was only Mandela at Codessa. All the other political party had to sit and watch the ANC. When we got our liberation, there was only one Cyril at the board. Only one. So when a black person makes it, the rest of us go, shit, he's taken the seat. That's why we practice crabs in a bucket. We go, the only way I get that seat is if I'm Tatu Vosing Begala. We don't think multiplier. Make sense? So he's going, I want to make a supercar. Nobody's going, how do I make tires for a supercar? We all go, shit, now he's done it. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, guys, this is my most honest reflection on, and I've thought about, do I make it a, do I share it on social media? I was just like, ah, the time will come. This is felt right as the time. Now, I'm, this will, people will see this and I'll get slated for it, I'm sure. But I'm telling you now, if you, if you, I see it with me. The only people who attack are the people who want the seat. But here's what you're not seeing. I'm sitting where I'm sitting, and where I'm sitting, the system I'm fighting, if I get it right, opens for all of us. So, you know, it's, it's the guy who fights Makosa. It's the guy who fights Tula Cindy. It's the guy who fights a Trevor Noah. What you don't recognize is what they are doing in their spaces makes it okay for us to be in those spaces. So, don't fight Ba to fight Nike. Don't fight Matosa, fight Gucci. Do, do you get it? Like, you're, you're, it's all wrong, guys. The mindset is this thing. Hey, man, we must be here, man. You know, my, you know? My uncle always says, says Ndwanak, how name a oblanga atanto? How name a Okay, cool. So, so the point I'm making, and so I don't want to get into the details of what happened in Venda, but let me put it to you this way. We got sabotaged. We went in, we got the land. I invested over, over 8 million rand building our hub. We went in, we went in local supplies. Everything in my hub was done by local people. The paving, the electrification, the fencing, everything. 8 million rand I pumped into the local economy of Toriando. Then you know what happened? Proper sabotage. The municipal manager, the mayor, 
the commissioner of police, the police station manager, even the judge at the high court were all in on it. I've said this publicly, f him, let him sue me, I got the money. <laughs> and, I, and I asked myself, why would they do it? Because it's very simple, in their minds, a young guy can't just come, Jay, come, Jay, just, Jay? No, no. He must respect first. <laughs> and you're just like, I'm trying to change the world. You know, like our hub was going to be free, guys, free. State of the art, running 4G networks. We we're offering 200 accredited courses with the University of Pretoria, 100 more by Gibbs, and 100 by the London School of Economics. Collectively, the courses alone are going to cost me 4 million. I was going to find young entrepreneurs in the area, educate them for free to walk out with a diploma or degree. Then I was going to give them a hub that runs for free. You can just come and use it. Network, Wi-Fi, anything you want, just come and use it. It's yours. Why? Because it just makes sense too. Yeah. Uh, the old people didn't see it that way. I think a lot of us are going to have to make a decision about who we're going to give the future of this continent to. Because the people in charge now, the old ones, they ain't got a clue what they're doing. They don't have a clue what they're doing. When you're going to pitch at that big business, I'm going to share some news for you. Down, I want to listen to this gentleman. When you're going to pitch for that opportunity at that big business, let me tell you, Fantonder is the one supporting you. Mantla Sbego at the board is one going, ah, no. Now, I know I've said some stuff that have cut deep, but you know what it hurt? Well, not what they say, it only hurts if it's true. My brother, over to you.